If you are buying any games on the eShop, you may as well buy your credit over at switchup.gg where you get 5% back in cashback after every purchase. You'll still obviously get your gold coins from Nintendo and all that gubbins, and we get a little kickback. What a cracking week we've just had on Nintendo Switch. Hopefully you saw our reviews of Star Wars Battlefront Collection, and most recently Kingdom Come Deliverance, which runs way better than I thought it would. I'll pop a link to those in the description so you go check them out afterwards. Firstly, congratulations to the winner of the free game this week. Your name is on the screen right now. You left a very nice comment. I consumed it with my eyes, possibly smiled for a few seconds, and then decided you were the winner. If you'd like to enter the giveaway each and every week, just leave comments and like other comments so they rise to the top with the entirely delightful after effect that the algorithm says, oh, look at all that engagement. Let's boost the video. All right, what are the best games on sale this week? Well, let's find out. First up, we've got Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights, which once again has gone to an even cheaper price. It's down 60% until March the 21st, and yeah, it's absolute peanuts for one of the best Metroidvanias we've got on Switch. And also, you might not have seen it, there's a sequel coming out for this one, so it's a really good time to work your way through it. You play as a young ethereal girl who has a ghostly companion who fights for her. Now, I wouldn't say on paper it does anything particularly new, especially if you like games like Hollow Knight, but it doesn't really need to do that. It just needs to do everything it does very well, and yeah, it certainly ticks that box. It's set within this haunting land where everything's been destroyed by this unusual rain. Now you've got 26 different skills, loads of different weapons, very good game. If you like Death's Gambit, Death's Door and Blasphemous, this one's right up there. The sale for that one only goes on until March the 21st, so you haven't got very long. All right, that one's been around a lot. It's on sale a lot, but this next one is easily my pick of the week. It's Star Ocean Second Story R, which sees its first big discount. Now, I reviewed this on the channel and I absolutely loved it. You don't need to have played the first game. Square Enix have bought this in line with some of its other recent releases in terms of its visual style. They've refined some of the systems, but the job system remains intact and it's excellent. I would say go and check out my full review because I do go into detail in every single area, but it takes the story that they originally released, gives it a lovely fresh coat of paint, and then as I say, just refine some of those combat systems. It's brilliant. If you like your Square RPGs and wanted something that has a sci-fi twist, then this is one that you're going to very much enjoy. You can have Japanese voiceover or English depending on your personal preference and there's three different difficulty modes in it. This for me was a start to finish playthrough which is quite rare these days unless it's for a review but it was one that I just couldn't put down. A bit like triangle strategy in that regard however I have to say this has got a lot less waffling than that game. There's a physical available for this that you can usually find quite cheaply as well and as I say that's Star Ocean the second story are 20% off until March the 28th. Now, maybe you're someone that didn't play some of the Tokyo RPG Factory games. I know that's a terrible name, but it was uh, basically a subsidiary set up. I think it was set up by Square to pump out RPGs. And you would think that they wouldn't produce, I don't know, I just don't like the name. It has a, a negative con connotation, doesn't it? The RPG Factory. But I Am Setsuna is the first of a trilogy that we have on Switch. There is, there's that game, Lost Sphere and Oninaki. All of those are on sale. So you could pick up all three of those. They're 70% off at the moment as well. And I just loved the melancholy atmosphere. There was no heroic, you know, I've been playing Chrono Trigger recently and, and that just starts in such a, you know, with those seagulls and stuff. It's still iconic and it's amazing, don't get me wrong. But I Am Setsuma is so the antithesis of that happy style, you know, that, that like bright, colorful, it's snowy, bleak, and it's all about death. So yeah, you might um, like it. <laughs> I did get stuck on the last boss though, that was a right pain. As I say, if you're interested in that trilogy at the moment, they're up to 70% off until March the 28th. I always like to get Final Fantasy 12 in my lists if it's on a very good sale and it's 60% off. Yes, please. For me, one of the most underrated Final Fantasy games, along with Final Fantasy VIII, which I am pleased to say I've uh, I've encouraged enough people to play now that, that I feel like I've done my part for it. So now it's the time of 12. Now, at the moment, they are all on sale. So if you want to pick up Final Fantasy VII, go do so. But I think 12, there, there was a bit of a departure in terms of some of the stylings that some people didn't like. I remember my brother being like, oh, it's terrible. It's, it does this. But I actually liked the this. He was talking about, you know, there's a... 
in terms of things like the combat, the world building, and even down to the visual in many ways. An excellent game, really very good, 60% off until March the 28th. Now a smaller one, a little ditty one, is Railbound. It's very, very addictive. It's 80% off at the moment, and it follows the ludicrously simple premise that you simply have to manipulate railway tracks to achieve a set goal. However, as we know, in arcade games and little puzzle titles, sometimes something so simple can be impossible to put down, and in fact, we'll talk about another game in a minute that is exactly that. So yeah, for a couple of quid, this is a perfect little loading game. You boot it up, you sit there with a big smile on your face, nice and colorful, and before you know it, you've just put three hours into the thing. Very nicely designed. I believe this was on iOS as well. I remember seeing my, I'm sure I saw my daughter playing this one, but really good, holds up nicely on the Switch. At 80% off, that sale goes on until April the 3rd. Perhaps controversially, I really liked Dragon Quest Monsters. I thought it was very good. There were some people that picked it up and said, hang on, this isn't Dragon Quest 13 or 12 or whatever. Why isn't there a huge RPG here? And I just stare blinking every now and then at those types of people that I see in the comments. It's a monster collecting game and it doesn't do a huge amount more than that. There are some aspects that are very bare bones. The first town, for example, is just basically, it's like walking into my town center, to be fair. It's empty. It's like it's uh, it's like the dev budget was brassic when they were making it. But in the defense of the game, it takes you into loads of different lands and they're actually quite interesting visually speaking. One of them's like the candy land. One of them's the classic Halloween style world. But the most important part in a monster taming game is uh, taming monsters and that's done very well. It's quick, it's a nice system, it's quite fluid, easy to pick up. You end up with this little ranch full of your creatures. Yeah, it's quality. I really enjoyed it. Another one that you can go check out our full review to see what we thought. That's Dragon Quest Monsters, 33% off until March the 28th. Now I mentioned one that's also stupidly simple but very, very addictive. It's Vampire Survivors, which I think is down to its lowest ever price at 15% off. You're only looking at a few quid. It's an absolute barjan. Also, sorry to that person someone said. <laughs> when I say barjan, it really upsets them. So I am not sorry. I mean, that was wrong, wasn't it? I should say I am very sorry, but that would be disingenuous because I'm not. Vampire Survivors is so easy to pick up and play. The premise is basically this. Choose a character, they each have their own attributes. Put some of your gold coins that hopefully you've earned into boosting them permanently. That's your meta progression. And then it enter one of the stages and try and stay alive. Dodge things and the game automatically shoots at enemies. How is that fun? Well, you're collecting up this little currency that makes a lovely little sound as you go over it. And you see that leveling bar at the top of the screen. There's something so satisfied about getting that currency, raising that level cap, and then choosing one of the abilities and just doing it over. Sometimes boss enemies will come into the fray. Once they're defeated, they drop these little power-ups that feels a bit like, I mean, I'm not promoting any form of gambling, but it, it feels a bit like a slot machine, the way it spins up, and then you get your reward and it's like, oh, it's so, so shiny. In co-op, it's even better, and you can do that with up to four of you. And I know that the uh, developer actually currently testing online multiplayer on Switch. I don't know if that's a secret or not. Um, if it is, ignore that. But for a few quid, this is such a good game. It's, it, yeah, easily in my top five at the moment then it's nice to get a few of these more hidden gems in there. Killer frequency is something I would never approach, not with a 10 foot barge pole. The reason is I'm a complete wuss and I don't like horror games. But Glenn has kind of talked me into this one with his review, it actually sounds really interesting. It's currently half price and see how this premise tickles you. It's the year 1987 and it's in the small town of Gallows Creek in the USA. You're playing as DJ Forrest Nash on his night shift and you take on that role of the late night talk show host. People will phone in and there are murders going on and sometimes there'll be victims, sometimes not. And you get to choose kind of and steer the conversation while gathering up clues, exploring, and there's like riddles built into that. It captures those 80s vibes really nicely. And playing this one in handheld with a set of headphones on, it's far, far better than I thought it would be. And I would say not as scary, it's more thrilling. Throw in the Synthwave soundtrack and yeah, yes please. So that one is half price at the moment down to £10.49, an easy little pick up until April the 9th. 
Now, in America, you finally have the Hogwarts Legacy sale that we had. It's 40% off until April the 1st. That's a nice chunky discount on what proved to be quite quite good, wasn't it? It was quite surprisingly good on Switch. Now, yes, it has a lot of drawbacks, and one of the biggest drawbacks is the draw distance, but I think it was still far better than most of us thought it would be. Again, performance review on the channel if you want to find all the nitty gritty, because there are a few things like some extra loading transitions, but as far as the base game goes, well, it actually plays really well. A massive open world RPG featuring lots of wizards and uh, the other ones. Hogwarts Legacy in the US is 40% off all the way up until April the 1st. You may remember we did a video on the Cub a while back. That's also 40% off now. That's easily its cheapest ever price. This is lovely. It feels a little bit like um, Mowgli from the Jungle Book enters a post-apocalyptic world, and it comes from the same people that created Golf Club Wasteland that got renamed to Golf Club Nostalgia. And it's great. It's a little platform adventure, reasonably linear. It has had a few patches because there were a couple of bugs at launch, but I love this art style as well. It has that hand-painted look to it, and the environments are filled with references to pop culture. You actually find a book, well, you find the Jungle Book very early on, so they obviously acknowledge the references that are being made there. It has a nice soundtrack, and the Martians basically come back to Earth and start playing golf and stuff in the background and then start terrorizing the main character. It has a few little Donkey Kong inspirations. There's like a minecart section, but it's a good game. And at 40% off, it's much more of a viable pickup, I think, for a lot of people. Now, the hidden gem this week is a game called Root. What is Root? Well, I didn't know what Root was either, but it's a board game. And it's actually a real world board game that's much, much loved. So with that slightly tenuous information at hand, I thought I'd give it a bash. And it's absolutely cracking. Now you can do one to four players offline. So if you're into your digital board games, which I've got to say with kids is way less messy. This one plays really nicely. The nefarious Marquise de Cat has seized the great woodlands and he's intent on harvesting its riches. And it's funny how much Actually, when you think about things like deck builders, deck building roguelites, how much they are inspired by board games, because this doesn't feel oftentimes like it, other than the fact obviously there's dice and things like that, it feels more like a, a classic RPG. You know, you've got your turn-based dice combat, you've got your card mechanics in there. Yeah, there's, there's so much overlap nowadays, isn't there? And Root is really very fun. It's only a gigabyte to download. It is still a little expensive, it's about 13 quid, it's only 10% off. But I thought, you know, a bit of a curveball, something a bit different. And also one that I don't think's had any recognition at all since it came out back in 2021. So I'm gonna be the person to give it that recognition. Okay, the last one before we look at a few Savaloys. We've got a review that Asdin did for us. He is actually, I think, should be editing this video. So nice one, Asdin. It's Black Skylands, it's 40% off, and it has had a few patches since it came out. I don't know if it's perfect. Maybe Asdin, you can, che you can check it out on your system and see if it runs any better. But I still think at 40% off, it's definitely worth that price. It had this really interesting hybrid gameplay where you were going around in an airship and there's like a mothership. You could upgrade. You could also go out on foot and there were different quest lines and things. He did very much enjoy it. I think the biggest gripe for most people was just a few performance quirks. But down at £10.79, it's around 17 to 20 hours long. And it is nice, isn't it, when developers just try something a little bit different. A game that isn't a uh, floor-hopping roguelite. Yes, please. <laughs> no hate to floor-hopping roguelites. We've just got a couple of them on Switch. So then we go over to our Savaloy selection. These are the games that are super cheap, usually just less than a couple of quid, and will cost you no more than that embarrassing local snack that you can't get enough of, like the big red Savaloys we have here in the UK, the Fed Cooks in uh, South Africa, or a good old pie that you have in Australia. I used to love a pie in Australia. They have these pies, right? And it had like, I mean, it might not sound nice, but it was like roasted vegetables. And then it was just covered in a mountain of cheese. Ooh, oh, I remember that one so well. That and a good little Campos coffee. Yes, please. Anyway, get off the nostalgia train, Walker. First up we have Planet Alpha, 80% off, just over a quid. Yes, please. A little side scrolling planetary platform game that almost reminds me of a Clockwork Knight. Is it a Clockwork Night? Oh, I can't remember now. Then we've got Layers of Fear Legacy, 85% off. One of the few games, horror games at least, that I can play through from start to finish. Very psychological. Has that artist theme as well, where you're repainting this picture. 
and realizing that you're actually um, not quite right in the head. That one's on sale until April the 7th. And Automicrops is 75% off. I think there are a few bugs and whatnot in this one. But growing mutant crops, getting married, and killing post-apocalyptic pests, now that I think most of those bugs have been squashed, is uh, yeah, a viable option for some. So that's it for this week. Thanks, Asdin, for the edit. Thank you to all of you that hopefully enjoy the content. Let me know what games you've picked up. Leave your comments. Tickle some buttons. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!